Welcome to Movie Friends. My name is Seth. Today we're talking about Elf from 2003, directed by John Favreau, written by David Berenbaum, cinematography by Greg Gardner, composed by John Debney, production design by Rusty Smith, starring Will Ferrell, James Caan, Zoe Deschanel, Bob Newhart, Mary Steenburgen, Faison Love, and as Santa Claus, Ed Asner. Now today, as part of our Home for the Holidays series, I am not joined by Michelle. I'm joined by two of my sisters, Tori and Jackie. How are you guys? Hey! Hi. I'm good. good. (laughs) It might be hard to tell the two of them apart. (laughs) Tori, why don't you introduce yourself so the folks can get used to your voice? Okay. I'm Tori. I'm Seth's sister, as he said. Also sisters with Jackie. And um, I love Christmas, so I'm excited for this. All right. Jackie? Hi. I'm Jackie. Um, well, actually, I'm your sister-in-law, so this is confusing. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Christmas, too. I've loved Christmas forever. I feel like before it was cool, I loved Christmas. Oh, okay. Was there a time when Christmas <laughs> was not cool? <laughs> I don't know. When I was, like, 12, Okay. Was All that right. not cool, I feel like? Oh, so what you mean is that you loved Christmas well past being a child. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. People usually reach an age where they put away childish things, and Jackie just kept taking them back out. <laughs> so, yeah, like, the reason that I asked you guys to do this isn't because you guys are necessarily, like, movie guys, but you guys are Christmas guys. Sure. And, like, I am very much not a Christmas guy. Because you're the Grinch. <laughs> yes, pretty much. <laughs> I'm the only one who showed up today wearing festive gear, and I'm wearing my Grinch hat. No, I look. Oh, you have a coffee have mug? Festive mug? I have a tree. I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but... I, you guys are both, like, big Christmas heads. So, like, what time of the year... When is the Christmas tree going up? This year, I put it up on um, Halloween night. <laughs> are you serious? Yes. And then I decorated it the next day with the kids, but it was up on Halloween. Okay. All right. Jackie, what about you? Well, we get a real tree. So after Thanksgiving, but there's okay. other Christmas decor going up right after Halloween. Okay. Wow. So both of you, as soon as, uh, as soon as the devil packs up his things and leaves town, you usher in baby Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay all right that's cool so normally in the show we would go to my co-host's thoughts before watching the film but you guys have already seen this movie probably like a dozen times right at least yeah i watch it a few times every season so <laughs> the first time i saw it i watched it two times in one night oh my gosh wow Oh. When would when would that have been? Do you know? Right around when it came out. Well, it was on. We watched it at home. So whenever it came out, to DVD. Okay. I guess. Wow. So you were just like, I'm doing that again. Yeah, we like rented it. I think I watched it alone, and then somebody, one of the siblings, came home, or like my mom, and watched it again. Yeah, that is kind of like easier to do when you're living at home and you have siblings. Like I remember when Walk the Line came out, we watched that movie like 20 times in one week. <laughs> we watched that so many Because times. we just kept watching it with different members of the family. We all have that uh, trait in us where we just watch the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not a one and done, you know? Gotta watch it at least 10 times. I kind of am with this movie. Well, Sorry. <laughs> And you can go. That's sad for you. <laughs> oh, I can go? You guys will just do this one without me? Yeah. No. I'm just saying it's sad that you don't want to watch it again. You both have kids. And so, like, what's the story? Are you showing this to your kids yet? Is this just like a put the kids to bed and watch it thing? Like, what is this? <laughs> Jonah and Bella have watched it already I many times every Christmas season, so... They like it. But I have to watch it by myself. What about you, Jackie? <laughs> Aaron put it on the other day to watch it, and Manny was there, but she's not. She wasn't She into wasn't it. really into it, so. Yeah, both of my kids love this movie, and so it's, it just plays all the time. And, like, normally, I, I so, you know, as I've said, I'm 
I'm really not a Christmas person and I'm really not a Christmas movie person. Like, I think Christmas movies are pretty horrible across the board. Okay. <laughs> but for the longest time, I would say, oh, except for I do really like Elf. And so I would watch Elf like once a year. Yeah. So why why did we land on Elf with you guys? Like, is this either of your favorite Christmas movies? No. <laughs> I mean, I love it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I guess it's one of my favorites. Okay. Jackie, is this your favorite? It's in my top five, I feel like. Yeah. All right. All right. If if I was going to go on a podcast, this is the movie I would talk about. Well, I guess that's why we're doing it then. (laughs) (laughs) But what's your, like, favorite? Like, what's your favorite? Home Alone, I think. Think or the Santa Claus. If we're just talking about Christmas movies, yeah. Yeah, Christmas movies, of course. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. So no, like Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Oh, that's a good one. Which one? Either one. I don't know. I mean, I like the '90s one. That's probably like maybe number five. Of my favorite. Hmm. Okay. All right. I think my favorite is a Christmas story. Because it's just so like cynical and sarcastic and uh, just really makes fun of the whole idea of like a kid Christmas. When I was growing up, I thought that that movie was so old because it it's made in 1983, but it takes place in like the 50s, I believe. I just wanted to mention because this kind of blew my mind. A Christmas Story is made in 1983. 20 years later, Elf is made in 2003. So there's only 20 wow. years difference between those two movies. This year, 2023, is the 20-year anniversary of Elf, which means that whatever Christmas movie comes out this year is the same time difference <laughs> between Elf and A Christmas Story. Whoa. Wow. Doesn't that make you feel extremely old? That's a lie. Yes. I was like, oh, Elf came out like five years ago. (laughs) No. And also, like, Will Ferrell is supposed to be 30 in this movie? Yeah. Really? I don't know. Yeah, because that's the whole thing that they keep saying is, oh, 30 years ago on Christmas night or Christmas Eve or whatever. Which, by the way, like, do you guys find it messed up that, like, the nun who puts him back in his crib is like, maybe next Christmas you'll have a family? (laughs) I think she meant well. (laughs) I think he was trying. Hopeful. Okay. All right. I would, I just heard that and I was like, man, none. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> like maybe she just does that like every single night. Like she's like, maybe next week you'll have a family. Yeah, probably. Yeah. All Speaking right. of I, I uh, wanna... weird age things, does anyone feel like? When Buddy is in the basement of his dad's work and he's with that guy, is that like a joke? When he's like, "Oh I'm yes, twenty <laughs> three Like, there's no I'm way. I'm twenty six years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like. Yeah. No. 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 That guy's got to be forty six at least. Yeah. Yeah. I would say. So Elf is a pretty straightforward story. It's kind of like an adaptation of Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I don't know if you guys get that vibe at all. Because it's like Buddy is, you know, he's like part of Christmas land, but he's like made fun of by the other elves, even though the elves are all pretty nice to him. And then eventually, by the end of the movie, it's Buddy who helps like make Santa's sleigh fly. And so much more, really. Well, well really- <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's more. Yeah, there's there's more for sure. But I just I never really put two and two together until rewatching it you know, the last few days for this. And I was like, this is Rudolph. Like Santa literally says to him, like, there's no one else that I'd rather have me help fly my sleigh tonight. And I was like, what the heck? Now that you say it. Yeah. It's a tender moment. Oh yeah. I I tear up a little bit. I'm not going to lie. When he says, buddy, you're more of an elf than anyone I know. Isn't that great? That's great. It is. That's what I would say to Jackie <laughs> if I ever needed her help on Christmas. <laughs> yeah. That would warm my heart. Well, it's never going to happen, so forget about it. Well, technically you did say it once. So the opening is pretty it's pretty great. John Favreau has talked about like how 
he didn't want to use any CGI. And I I read an interview with him where he's like, we didn't use any CGI, nothing. He's like, maybe just some snow falling. But then like the whole snowball scene, that's all CGI. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff with Santa Slay at the end that is. We get what I think is like the most disgusting looking CGI I've ever seen. Outside of Gimbal's, there's this huge nutcracker on the side of the building and it looks like they just like cut and paste out of like Microsoft paint or something onto the building and they cut back to it later on. And I'm like, Oh, why? Like that does not look good. Get that out of here. But in the beginning at the North pole, we're getting a lot of cool practical effects stuff. We're getting a lot of the uh, stop motion stuff from the old. Do you guys watch those Christmas movies like Rudolph and yeah. How do you feel about those? I love them. They're classics. They are great. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> like just, just everything about them, the way that they move and look. And I love stop motion, but the whole time I'm just like, oh, I want to throw up. Oh, wow. <laughs> but for that time, those were really good. Oh, yeah. You know I mean? No, it looks Yeah, it looks. I mean, well, I, know, I mean, I think it looks bad, but it's just like only because. You know what it can look like now. You know when you have like a fabric that you don't like to touch? Yeah. Like for me, like velvet just sends a shiver down my spine. Microfiber. Yes. Microfiber cloths. Oof. Horrible. On my dry, dry skin. It's not a good combination. <laughs> Jackie, what about you? You got any sensory problems when it comes to fabrics? Um, no, I guess not. Are you guys okay? <laughs> Jackie's like, I'm starting to feel better about myself. And I, I used to work. The longer list where that came from. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I used to work in a costume store, which Tori worked at with me as well. Uh, that was pretty. Anyway. And each year, the Santa costumes had to come out. And I had to like take them out and like hang them up. And I would, it, oh, I would just shiver having to touch those suits. Oh. Maybe that's why I hate Christmas so much. <laughs> that's it. I think about touching yeah. Santa's that's suit and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> I like that feeling of velvet. Do you? Yeah. All right. Maybe it's because you're a rich guy <laughs> sitting around in your velvet pants. I I do own many velvet <laughs> things, so. <laughs> do you really? No, I don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So Santa's got a little like a uh, slave labor thing going here with these elves. And uh, as soon as Christmas is over and they're all partying, he shows up and he's like, great job, everybody. Time to start on next year. And they're like, woohoo. And they like put away their party and start making toys again. And it's like, OK, wow. All right. And Buddy, Buddy, the baby crawls out. And I never noticed that the reason they call him Buddy is because his diapers say little Buddy diapers. Did you guys ever notice that? Yeah. <laughs> never knew that. I also never noticed that there are twin elves in this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, two of the elves that are talking. <clears throat> I guess because they just all look the same to me. Which, like, not to be racist towards elves and say that they all look the same, but... That was racist towards elves. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know. Tell me what you guys think about Bob Newhart as Papa Elf. He warms my heart. I love him. He's so caring and... Looks out for Buddy, and I love him. <laughs> He's a good dad, but yeah, maybe he could have told Buddy a little sooner. <laughs> <laughs> about <definitely> good <laughs> yeah, what was like the idea there? Like he'll just never know, and yeah, I think they just wanted him to feel like he was one of them, so they were like, "We can't tell him." When Buddy is leaving, and Papa Elf gives him the snow globe. And he's like, you know, he's like telling him like, be, you know, take care of yourself and I'll always be here for you. And then he's like, all right, go on, get <laughs> like he's some kind of dog or something. It's a dad thing to do. Yeah, a little awkward. Opposite Bob Newhart, we have Ed Asner as Santa Claus. What do you guys think about his portrayal as Santa? Honestly, I feel like he wasn't. I think he did a good job, but he wasn't super jolly, which is what Santa's. No, he's like an angry Santa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's 
Yeah, he's not very jolly, now that you say that. But I feel like this movie's not really about him, so I don't really care. Yeah. But if you still believed in Santa, you'd be like, wait a second. (laughs) This is not about Santa. Did you guys ever believe in Santa when you were kids? Maybe, potentially. I remember G. Marie trying to get me to believe in Santa. Why? (laughs) Like, oh my gosh, like, do you hear that on the roof? Blah, blah, blah. Really? Oh, she was trying to spread Christmas yeah. here. And I wanted to. I were like, I like remember that last bit of hope was maybe there, but I just. Right. It's not real. But you were just weren't dumb enough to believe that Santa's real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should put a warning on this, like, if there's children listening. Oh, oh that's actually a. <laughs> pretty because we're we're really giving away a lot of stuff (laughs) right 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 (laughs) yikes that's a good idea i was actually there as a child when tori told one of our cousins that santa isn't real and she was older than tori that was a nightmare yeah she was like what do you mean and she like went uh, straight to her parents i was like santa's not real and it was like oh man and the thing is is i wasn't even like I wasn't trying to be like malicious or no, like. It was summertime. Like, I, like, you are so much older than me, so like you, there's no way she believes in Santa. Yeah, this is what I was thinking in my head, and then I quickly, quickly realized that she absolutely believed in Santa, and I got in so much trouble from her mom. <laughs> she was so mad at me. But like, what is what is the grift? Like, I, I don't understand that with parents. Like, why do you want them to think it's Santa? So that. Throughout the year, you can get them to listen to you? Is that what it is? I think for some parents, yeah. Yeah, maybe that's it. I'm not telling Maddie that Santa's real. Yeah, no way. Well, I've always been like, why am I giving Santa the credit? Like, hey, all these presents, they're not for me. I wouldn't have done this, okay? (laughs) I don't love you that much, kids. (laughs) Right, yeah, you could thank Santa for this one. I mean, like, Jonah and Bella, Bella especially, like, they know Santa's not real, but they like to pretend, and I'm like... As long as you know he's not real, sure. You want to pretend he's real, that's fine with me. Yeah. But he's not real. Yeah, my <laughs> oldest kid just rewatched Elf with me. And when Buddy and Papa Elf are talking about how the sleigh works on like Christmas spirit, Buddy's like, well, where do they think all the presents come from? <laughs> and Papa Elf is like, well, they, they think their parents buy them and wrap them. And he's like, that's ridiculous. And my son was like, yeah. I think I'm going to try to believe in Santa Claus this year, even though I know he's not real. Yeah. I was like, okay. I mean, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> but <laughs> So Buddy finds out that he's adopted because he's really bad at making toys, even though he's much better than any human being would be at making toys. I agree. And Santa breaks it to him like pretty. This is like the best telling of someone that they were adopted. I think like I've ever seen. He's just very matter of fact. He's like, your dad met a woman, fell in love, but then he left. He never knew you were there. Very neat for like a kid's movie. You know what I mean? Like, do you guys think that this is a kid's movie? I think it's geared more towards adults, but I think it's fine for kids. Like, I think it's appropriate and and some things they get, but there's probably a lot that goes over their head. Yeah, I think it's definitely more for adults like parents maybe i don't know maybe they were trying to make it for everyone but really more for the parents so we cut over to new york for a quick second to meet walter hobbs buddy's dad and i get what they're doing but this scene makes no sense okay he a higher up in this publishing company is demanding that a nun return books that the children are using because she missed payments what payments are there on children's books and like why would he be the one doing this you know what i mean yeah i think it doesn't really make a lot of sense but i think they're just trying to say like he's a scrooge yeah like he's really selfish and only cares about himself but yeah so i think they're trying to get that point across but it doesn't really make sense yeah it definitely doesn't make sense but i think because i've been watching this for the past 20 years I've just accepted it and was like, yeah. (laughs) Like, yeah, in between approving, you know, the final draft of books, he calls nuns to his office to demand those same books back. (laughs) 
So yeah, Buddy uh, finds out that his dad is on the naughty list, and this is like the worst thing he can possibly imagine. But then Santa gives him like the worst advice. Like Santa gives him some good advice about like New York City. But then he's like, maybe he just needs Christmas spirit. And so Buddy like sets off to be like, yeah, I'm going to like spread Christmas spirit to my dad. You know, that includes like buying him ladies underwear. (laughs) Which upon rewatching again with my 10 year old son, he was cracking up that entire scene. And I was like, I don't know what you understand. That's funny because, well, yeah, 20 years ago, I was 10 and I remember dying laughing at that scene. What was 10 year old Jack? Did you fully understand what was going on? (laughs) (laughs) Probably not. But I I think it just shows Buddy's innocence. Like, he literally just, he's so innocent and naive, and he just read for someone special. Right, right. My dad. <laughs> he didn't know what it meant. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I, I I'm not always down with Will Ferrell movies. Like sometimes the yelling just gets to be too much. You know, I don't know. It's hard to say, but this this might be my favorite performance of his. It's not necessarily the funniest, but it's the one that I can like stomach the most. He really does play Buddy exactly like a kid, and. Now that I have kids, some of the stuff that he does is less funny to me and more like, oh, my God, that's exactly what having a kid is like. <laughs> like, yeah, when they're when he's walking through the park with Michael and he's like, I like your coat. Hey, good news. I saw a dog today. Do you have a best friend? Does he have a big coat, too? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, yeah, this is what hanging out with a kid is like. It's just rapid fire nonsense until you say okay stop (laughs) so buddy walks from (laughs) the north pole to new york city which is okay that's interesting all of the roads and like highways and stuff that buddy's walking on through new york city like there's one scene where he's like walking down one of the tunnels and he's just like on that little side road they did not shut down any of those roads. Those were active roads. They literally just had Will Ferrell like walk down the side and they recorded it. It was like kind of dangerous that they did it for like 20 seconds of footage. The first scene when he gets to New York City, it's like the they're playing this on Pennies from Heaven. And it's the montage of him going all around the city, like doing all the funny Buddy the Elf things. That was not in the script or like anything at all. They had one more day in New York City and they just kind of like took some cameras and they're like, let's just go around. And like if they came up with an idea, they said that they just gave the people like cash. Like they're like, hey, can we shoot something in your restaurant? Here's some money. That's why no one talks, because if if people talk on film, then they have to be part of the Screen Actors Guild and they have to get paid a certain amount. So like no one talks throughout that whole sequence except for Will Ferrell. That's funny. And it's like the best part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And like, it wouldn't have been in there. And I feel like them not talking is actually more natural. Like, if someone, people in the city, they would just like look at you like. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the rule of New York City is you don't talk to the crazy dude in the weird outfit. Yeah. How much would you guys have to be paid? And I want a real number. How much would you have to be paid to eat a piece of gum from underneath a subway railing? trillion dollars <laughs> <laughs> actually i have, if they just bought me a house i'd be like okay i'll eat gum. okay so one house <laughs> i'd say a million because i feel like i could retire True. and deal with the health issues that came from eating that piece of gum so you guys went high i'm thinking like 12 1200 bucks Maybe. But you're also known for eating things. Uh... Yeah, I've built up an immunity. That are pretty dirty, so. Yeah, I've built up an immunity to it over the years. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely want more than a thousand, but I don't want to be greedy. So when Buddy is in the doctor's office and he is eating cotton balls, does that not just like send a shiver up your spine? How do they taste good? Like, how do they taste so good? I don't even know that it tastes good as much as it's just like 
This this part is weird though, because it's like <laughs> Buddy isn't magical. He's just a normal guy. And so how is he able to eat cotton balls? <laughs> well, I think it's just like he doesn't know anything. He's naive. He's innocent. He's just like, oh, this must be food. <sighs> and I'm going to eat it, even if it doesn't taste good. Okay. but Maybe it felt good, though. <laughs> think about a cotton ball going in between your teeth. The squeaking of it. Come on. I'm throwing up right now. Maybe if I soaked them in something like okay. good, then... Maybe I can still really like pickled cotton balls. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me know how that works out this Christmas season. <laughs> Be like, guys, have you seen Elf? <laughs> well, guess what I've got? Buddy makes his way to his dad's office. He goes into Walter and Walter thinks that it's like a saving telegram. And instead of it being that, Buddy just sings about how he loves him. And it's very odd and weird. And then he mentions Susan Wells. And it's weird that Walter remembers who Susan Wells is. He knows. But like he just like kicks him out like right away. I guess it is kind of like weird and creepy. But like, wouldn't you want to talk to him? Well, I think that's a part of his life that he wanted to forget. So he probably was just like that was his initial reaction was to just make it go away. Yeah. He probably thinks maybe in that moment probably doesn't think it's real. You know, like this guy is dressed up like he is. Maybe somehow got the name Susan Wells. I don't know. Right. I don't know. If someone came up and they're like, I'm your child of and then named one of my ex-girlfriends, I'd be like, oh, we better figure this out. (laughs) Not immediately arrest that man. (laughs) Arrest my son. Maybe stalker or something. It's true. But that's what, you know, you figure it out. You don't just be like, all right, bye, and then go about your day. You're like, this will never come back. Glad I dealt with that one. Well, don't they show him, though, like looking in after that when he was home, he looked in his yearbook? Yeah. For whatever it was. Yeah, for the picture. We didn't explicitly mention it, but Walter's played by James Caan, all-time great angry guy, James Caan. And like putting him in this movie, it's such a smart thing because I believe him maybe more than like anyone else in this movie it's like i don't know casting like the devil in your movie to play a nice guy (laughs) not to say that james (laughs) con is the devil but you know he's he's not known for playing like huggable dudes also james con was jewish and uh they do have a menorah in their house so i don't know that they like fully broached the subject but that could be one of the reasons why they don't have a Christmas tree and their house isn't fully decorated for Christmas. Like that might maybe was like an angle that they thought about exploring and then they like trimmed back. I don't know. But so after he gets kicked out, he makes his way over to Gimbel's, which is the department store from Miracle on 34th Street. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but they were thinking about doing like a partnership with Macy's for this movie. And Macy's like agreed to let them shoot in their store and all that stuff. And I think they were going to like incorporate them into the Macy's parade and everything. But their only caveat was that they couldn't include the scene where they find out that Santa isn't real because Macy's like part of Macy's marketing is that like their Santa is the real Santa. And so they're like, you can't have that scene. He is. Okay. He is the real Santa. And so because of that, they decided not to shoot it in Macy's. And this this kind of like blew my mind. They shot it in like a hospital in Canada instead of shooting it at the Macy's in New York City because they didn't want to change that scene. <laughs> Why Canada? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, we got to leave the whole country now. We <laughs> We turned on Macy's. We can't show our face anywhere. (laughs) That's odd. (laughs) But yeah, like most of the interior shots were done in like sound stages. But then also this like abandoned hospital in Canada. It was like the cafeteria, I think. It kind of gives off cafeteria vibes. (laughs) Jackie's like, huh, I thought something looked familiar about the movie Elf. From 2003. So he goes to Gimbel's and first of all, we meet Faison Love as the manager. He might be like my favorite character in this movie. He is taking 
Christmas like very seriously, but like not as serious as Buddy. And so he's like intimidated by Buddy. But then we also meet Zoe Deschanel. What do you guys think about her in this movie? I love her. I wanted to be her when I was young. You wanted to be her? Jovi? Yeah, I wanted to be Jovi. What kind Beautiful. of name is that? Beautiful singing voice. Just a beautiful person. But she hates Christmas. But then she loves it at the end. Okay. <laughs> Her heart is softened. It's true. Okay. I love Zoe Deschanel. I'm not... I kind of get turned off in movies when they have, like, artists, like, in a movie, in a role, and they have them sing. I'm yeah, like... Yeah. All right, we know you know how to sing. Right. But can you do a cartwheel? Right, Is that right. <laughs> I mean, like, it is it is beautiful. Like, she does a phenomenal job, but it's like, I know you can sing. So it's like, why do you, why do you guys show it off in, in this movie? Well, so it's pretty funny that you <laughs> say exactly what you just said, because apparently John Favreau was, like, into kind of, like, catering the role of of Jovi to like whatever actress it was. And she came on late. They had already cast another actress. I did not get any info as to who it was, but what they said was this actress was good at skateboarding. And so Jovi (laughs) originally was going to be a skateboarder. And like that would somehow incorporate into the movie. (laughs) That would have been a plot twist. (laughs) Like maybe at the end she uses her skateboard to like help push Santa's sleigh. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's funny. Because like Jovi singing is pretty like, it's important at the end. You know, like yeah. that's what she uses to uh, trick the people into believing in Santa. Oh yeah. So what would Jovi just be like skateboarding at the end? <laughs> She'd be like, "Watch me, guys." <laughs> And then everybody skateboards together. <laughs> Everyone, grab your skateboards. And we'll all hold hands and skate. Yeah. Board. Maybe, maybe. You never know. Oh, that's funny. You never know. I'm glad they didn't do that. <laughs> so John Favreau was the director, and, you know, he would go on to do um, a little movie called Iron Man. Have you heard of it? Never. Okay. I'm not a movie guy. I'm a Christmas guy. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Just kidding. I love Iron Man. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, something else that you didn't mention yet. Okay. To reference the movie. Um, you said your favorite movie is. Oh yeah, A Christmas Story. A Christmas Story, and the elf. Peter Billingsley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention that. I'm sorry. There's a connection there. I'm sorry. There. Is... Oh, definitely. Mean Mean, right? I think yes. that's... <laughs> Their names are all like Mean Mean or Poof Poof. Yes. <laughs> like Nut Nut or whatever. I think one of them was Choo Choo. Buddy actually has the most normal name. Yes, mean. yeah, he does, yeah. Yeah, and he's good. He, I, and I didn't know that. Like, when I first saw Elf, I had no idea that that was grown-up Ralphie. Did you guys know that? I did, but I think, like... I don't think I figured it out on my own. I think, like, someone told me, like, oh, yeah. Mean Mean is played by... Right. But it's like, once you, like, he still looks like him. Right. He still looks like himself from when he was a little kid. I feel like I did know that, but I'm being reminded I forgot about that. Wow. Jackie is going to see Elf with a whole new (laughs) pair of eyes after this. Yeah. Can you imagine if by the end of it, she's like, I don't like this movie anymore. (laughs) Wait, that would be funny. You start out like a podcast loving a movie, and then by the end of it, you're like, I, I actually hate this. I can't support this. Well, I don't know if you ever listen to our show. That's basically what happens to Michelle every week. <laughs> by the end of it, she's like, I'm so sick of this movie. <laughs> ah, that's true. So he finds out that Santa is coming, and everyone leaves, and he does this whole like kind of Home Alone Mission Impossible thing where he decorates the whole store. Back at Walter's place, we see Walter's wife, Emily, who's played by Mary Steenburgen, who I love, mainly because she's in my favorite movie ever, Clifford. If you guys haven't seen that. Which I feel like there's a connection there. Oh, yeah? With Clifford and Elf, yeah. 
Oh, childlike movies? <laughs> it's like an adult man acting like a child. Right. Around Mary Steen you know? version. And she, <laughs> that's actually true. Yeah. And she is more like nice and sympathetic to him. And the angry, yes. yeah, old Dad. man is like, yeah, this guy sucks. Okay. Yes. Wow, yeah, that's true. I never thought about it. Now you love it even more. All right, so now I'll say this movie is based on Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Clifford. (laughs) Clifford. So, yeah, he says he's not going to eat dinner. He really goes and, like, looks at his old yearbook. We meet the son, Michael. How did you guys feel about Michael? He wasn't cringy. He wasn't what? (laughs) He wasn't cringy. Like, but maybe I'm just used to watching, like, Hallmark movies. Like, those are... Mm. Those kids are. It's rough. (laughs) Watching Elf is like a breath of fresh air. I feel, I don't know, I, he's not a great actor, but I feel bad for him. So I guess it's like, I look past him not really being that good at acting. Yeah. Michael is just very much like, hey, yo, I'm New York boy. Yo, hey. <laughs> what do you mean there's no Christmas? <laughs> I, I'm also like just kind of put off because <laughs> James Conn and Mary Steenburgen are not young people. And like Michael seems like a super, super young kid. I wish that they I, I wish that they just aged him up to be like 17. You can still get him going to school. You can still get him getting attacked by the snowball game. Yeah, but I feel like at his age, him and Buddy are more like equal mentally. Okay. <laughs> than like a child. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not the biggest fan of Michael or his big coat. I love the big coat. So back at Gimbal's, Jovi is taking a shower at work, which it's like, I don't know. I've never worked at a department store in New York City. Is it common to have showers there? Again, maybe this is another thing. I've just accepted it. I've watched the movie for 20 years. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I mean, I was 10 when I first watched it. So yeah, of course there's showers. Yeah, it's just like, all right, shower at work. Yeah. yeah. It's like, right, I'm going to get off this register and then go <laughs> take a quick, quick shower before I head home. <laughs> but she's in the shower and she's singing Baby, It's Cold Outside. Buddy goes in and like sings with her. I don't know. You guys are two ladies. How, how do you feel about this? Um, If it happened to me, I would obviously freak the flip out. <laughs> but it's funny in the movie. Like, and again, it's just like, he's not trying to be like creepy like he he's so innocent and naive like he doesn't understand like he's like i didn't know you were showering or i didn't know you were he just thinks that she has a beautiful voice and wants to sing with her <laughs> it's like when your toddler walks in on you going to the bathroom for showering like all right, all right. you guys are giving him the you guys are giving buddy the elf the shower pass i'm not <laughs> I'd be, I'd be calling the cops on him for the second time in two days. <laughs> Again, if it was real life, it would be different. Right. Okay. But in the movie, I feel like with everything, it's it's fine. Okay. Right. But then they fall in love. So is she falling in love with like a toddler? Hmm. Right. Like at oh a my- certain point, we have to say that he is childlike, but not a child. Mm. Yeah. Another thing that they base this movie on, like tonally, in terms of like a kid relating to like an adult world was the movie big with Tom Hanks. I don't know the last time you guys watched big with Tom Hanks, but if you've ever wanted to feel very uncomfortable about love scenes, (laughs) it's not cool (laughs) at all. It's, it's real uncomfortable. So yeah, Jackie, I'm kind of with you where it's like, Maybe we didn't need to add romance into Buddy the Elf, you know? Yeah. I didn't need to see him kissing. Like, as the movie's going on, I'm not like, when's this guy going to start kissing? (laughs) That's what I want to see. But he is an adult. Really. I agree. He's just lived in a fairy tale world his whole life. I mean, a real world. (laughs) And then back at Gimbal's, everyone's like, wow, look at all this stuff. Wow. And the manager's like, I think they brought somebody in. They're trying to replace me. We need to stick together. I love him. I love this guy so much. And this is when Santa comes in. And Santa Claus is played by the comedian Artie Lane, who is like a very crass and crude comedian. So again, they're kind of like, 
it's like stunt casting where anyone who knows who Artie Lane is would be like, oh, that's a pretty funny choice to make him be Santa Claus. This is one of my favorite jokes in the movie when Buddy is like, you're not Santa. He's like, well, of course I am. He says, well, if you're Santa, what song did I sing to you on your birthday? <laughs> because uh, like every time I watch it, I'm like, oh, that's a good question. And then he's like, well, happy birthday, of course. And I'm like, oh, duh. When is Santa's birthday? Whoa. Wow. I, I've i had every time I watch the movie, I'm like, so when is it? <laughs> Jackie's like, come on, <laughs> elf. Give us the good stuff. Jackie, if you knew what Santa's birthday was, would you celebrate it? I mean, maybe we could work that into the year, <laughs> the calendar. Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's after Christmas so that he like gets a nice treat after all his hard work, you know? He, he's February. not doing anything. He's good. The elves are doing everything. He just drops <laughs> the stuff off. And he eats all the cookies. Okay. Uh, that would be torturous honestly to just keep eating and eating and eating Ugh. maybe he has a never-ending stomach buddy in the fake santa fight i guess they could only do this in one shot because setting up the lego town took two weeks so when they destroy it they're like we literally can only do this once so get it right wow so because this buddy gets arrested and he calls walter walter bails him out and he brings him to the doctor the doctor is played by john favreau the director and we already mentioned Buddy's disgusting cotton ball eating, which is, ugh, ugh. Do you know what I mean by the squeak? Like, if you put a cotton yeah. ball in your between your teeth and you went... <laughs> we all have to try. Troy, go get a cotton ball right now and eat it. I want to see this live on air. If I had a cotton ball, I would. Disgusting! I... Disgusting! <laughs> Jackie, would you? No, I'd probably throw up. I do have a cotton ball, though. Will you try it right now? I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't bring myself to do that. No. I wouldn't swallow it, but I put it into my teeth. So, Jackie, I had a question for you, because you're a doctor. Not at all. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I'm sorry. She's better than a doctor, actually. What, Jackie, what are you? She knows more than a doctor. I'm just um, a person that goes to work sometimes <laughs> well okay anyway jackie works in the medical field and so i was wondering do you have adult patients like this like when he's like why am i sitting on paper and why is that skeleton over there and then like screaming because of a finger prick oh, um yes <laughs> to a certain to a, i feel i feel bad saying that but it's, people are a little we like Buddy, though, like, you know what I mean? Like, we like that about him, but... Yeah. You know, there's something about a grown adult being like, oh, that hurts so bad, and, like, it's really not that bad. So the vibe that I'm getting is that you guys think everything Buddy does is great, but if a real person <laughs> did it, it would be horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Another question is, Jackie, do blood tests come back in, like, five minutes? Never. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Like, even if this do doctor ever... wanted to rush this test, could he do a paternity test right there? I don't think so. I don't think so. And yeah, there's like no labs in a doctor's office usually, right? Like, usually, yeah. Yeah. At least if there are, they've been lying to me my entire life. Like, they say, we have to send this to the lab. It'll be. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send it to the lab. Like, well, where's the lab? I'll bring it. Do you go to the doctor to get a paternity test for your kid? Like, can't you just... I don't know. I have no idea. I, I've never been in this situation before, surprisingly. <laughs> I'll look into it. <laughs> but I'm only 35, so get back to me when I'm, I don't know, 70, like James Conn. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a little Buddy the Elf show up someday. <laughs> so the doctor kind of gives bad advice like Santa and he's like, ah, just bring him home. He'll become normal. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, Doc. And then, yeah, his wife, Emily, is really excited and they go in. She's like, he can't possibly think he's an elf. And then they go in and she's like, oh, OK, because he's decorated the whole thing. Buddy, 
uh, likes to eat candy, as we all know. Do you guys remember off the top of your head the four elf food groups? Candy, candy, candy canes, candy corn, and syrup. That's right. Wow, good job, Jackie. That was good. I only remembered syrup. <laughs> I say spaghetti, but I was like, oh. well, I was gonna say, do you do you know the food groups for humans? Even Tori's like syrup, <laughs> spaghetti, <laughs> cotton balls. Do you guys remember the food pyramid when we were kids? Yeah, it's they say it's not. It was like I can't remember what was at the bottom. Meat? Probably fish? I don't know. I can't remember if it was like the bottom is what you're supposed to eat all the time. And I think it was like Whatever the worst food is is at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It was like grains, fruits, vegetables, meat. That are, and like, I, oh, I don't know if I don't know if the top was like sugar or oil or something. The very tippy and they would top. always they would always illustrate <laughs> oil by like an oil bottle with like measuring spoons full of oil. I was like, who's eating that? Buddy the elf. So Buddy gives out a huge burp here, and I immediately thought of Tori. I also think of myself. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> Can you share a little bit about your burping history? I. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember being really little and Adam somehow teaching me how to burp really loud. And then I couldn't undo it. Like, I couldn't. I can't burp quietly. <laughs> Some are louder than others, but it's never like a like a little, you know, yeah. little cute burp. It's like a raw. <laughs> Every time Tori burps, it's like raw, raw. Yeah. Sounds like a motorbike is going by. It's bad. No, it's great. It's funny because okay. you're like, what are you? What are you like? Five one? Five three. Are you really? When I stand up straight. When, you, when you're not <laughs> slouching into the couch. I'm not slouched. I'm five three. <laughs> yeah, because Tori's just like standing there talking to you, short, soft spoken, and then out of nowhere, it's like burp. Anyway. It's terrible. So, would you guys eat the maple syrup and spaghetti? Honestly, I'm. I would probably try the spaghetti and maple syrup, without the candy and other stuff. But okay, I'd give it a try. You I'd would? definitely give it a try. Oh yeah, that was kind of good. Sweet noodles. Buddy says that he got into a, uh, a full forty minutes of sleep. I relate to that. Which I feel like I honestly understand that. Like sometimes, like the less, if it's not broken sleep, but if I just like have a small amount of sleep, it's better. Than me like waking up every hour and sleeping all through the night, you know? Yeah, but, and, but like again, it's like Buddy isn't magic. Like he's a grown adult man. He would need to sleep more than 40 hours. <laughs> right? I mean, Jackie, you're a doctor. Uh, well, I was just going to say toddlers, I feel like, can really, they are magic sometimes. Yeah. The that more tired true. they are, the more they can do. That's true. true. That's true. Buddy goes and like picks up Michael from school, and they get jumped by the evil snowball gang of Central Park. Which, like, Michael's like, these guys are bad news. Like, what does that mean? Like, what happens after the snowball fight? <laughs> do they get beat up? Do they get robbed? Like, what's what's the story here? Drugs, maybe. I think that's I think that's definitely it. So after Buddy helps him with the snowball fight, Michael's like impressed with him now, and they go on a rampage through New York City, uh, causing trouble, jumping on beds. It's very obnoxious. And uh, they go up and they <laughs> see Jovi. Michael tells him that there's like a secret code for asking girls out, which is like, do you want to get food? And again, I'm not a lady. You guys can tell me. Is that like is that like the secret? Like feeding people, feeding girls? I'm I really don't like showing up anywhere unless I know I'm gonna be eating. <laughs> Food is great, but <laughs> some, some I feel like on a first date, like, aren't you maybe I'm the only one when you're nervous, aren't you like nauseous and you don't wanna eat? Just saying. That's true. I mean I've never experienced that. If anything, I get nervous and I want to eat more. But yeah, like there's so many weird like red flags with Jovi and Buddy, like the shower thing saying like, oh, yeah, they got a restraining order against me, but I'm just here. 
And then like on the first date, the first thing that we see him do is blindfold her and have her drink something. There's something wrong with this woman. <laughs> that she's going along with all of this. She obviously hasn't seen much life. That's one way of putting it, yeah. <laughs> That's true. I guess she's just as naive as Buddy. Yeah. So B- Buddy goes to work and he gets sent to the mail room. I love that he thinks coffee sucks because it does. Part of growing up is like learning to hate yourself enough that you convince yourself that coffee tastes good. Jackie, are you a coffee? Are you a coffee guy? Yeah, I like coffee. But maybe I like what I put in the coffee too. Got it. You know? I I know and I agree. I think that that is what it is. So we meet the the pitch guys played by Andy Richter and Kyle Gass. Their idea is just to bring in a different writer. So they decide to do it and they contact Miles Finch and Miles Finch is played by Peter Dinklage kind of before Dinklage like blew up, you know, with like Game of Thrones and stuff. But Dinklage was in stuff like he had already done the station agent, um, which is awesome. Awesome movie. So how do you guys feel about Peter Dinklage kicking Will Ferrell's butt? It was hilarious. It was a very funny scene. <laughs> I understand why he did what he did. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. And it's like, I actually looked this up. I typed into Google, is Miles Finch scene offensive? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see like what people thought about it. And like, I read a few different like blogs, like little people blogs or like disability in movies blogs. And they were all like, yeah, it's great. It's funny because in the end, Miles Finch beats him up. I was like, oh, all right. I didn't know that was the rule, but sure. As long as the person being made <laughs> fun of gets to beat someone up. Right, right. So yeah, they go on their date. Jovi brings him to see the big tree at Rockefeller Center. Have you guys ever gone to see that? I've only seen it once in my entire life for the first time, like, four years ago mm. and it was magical mm. <laughs> i went maybe like eight years ago and it's crowded and like you're really touching a lot of people yes all day yes i went with my wife and like a few friends no no little kids and we both said we we're like we'll never bring kids here until they're at least 10 12 because there were just so many people. It was, I mean, like it's New York City. It's always crowded, but this was like a whole other level. And I was pretty disappointed. Like I saw the tree and I was like, wait, that's it? This isn't like 20 stories tall. Like I've been led to believe. It's huge. <laughs> it's, it doesn't feel that big. <laughs> Fun fact. They've gotten the tree from the town where we live now two times. Wow. Really? Yeah, wow. like since we moved out here. Well, actually, maybe just one time since we moved out here. But isn't that, hmm. I think that's pretty rare. The same town. Okay. Jackie brought the Christmas spirit. This year, it's from somewhere pretty close by, too. So he kisses her on the cheek, and she's like, you missed me. And then she kisses him. And again, this kissing goes on too long. Do you think so? Am I alone in this? I honestly have never thought about the time frame of the kids so i don't know and i'm trying to like think back and i don't know if it's too long it is kind of uh if you really think about it it is it's kind of uncomfortable because buddy is a child you know yeah i agree hey i agree i could never be attracted (laughs) to someone so childish (laughs) well that's good i think that that's a nice normal healthy mature adult thing to do (laughs) So anyway, um, Buddy comes back. I'm in love. I'm in love. And I don't care who knows it, which is something that I say a lot. Whenever I walk into a room, I'll just be like, I'm I'm in love. I'm in love. And I don't care who knows it. It's probably the only thing that I quote from this movie regularly. Uh, That's when the whole Miles Finch fight happens. Buddy's like kicked out of Walter's life. He ends up on the bridge and he's like, I don't belong anywhere. And I'm like, is Buddy about to jump? Do you, do you guys get that vibe? I didn't think he was going to jump. <laughs> okay, okay. So this is when we see Santa's sleigh crash. Once we get into the whole like fixing Santa's sleigh ending, this movie kind of peters out for me. I'm also kind of confused because Santa's like, 
well, we can't just show everybody me. They'll see me. It won't be like the same as believing. But then at the end, everyone sees Santa fly away. <laughs> so what's up with that? Just don't think don't about know. it. Okay. Just All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. It's just, I think it's not supposed to make sense. You just have to have a little faith. All right. In Santa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> goodness. So yeah, in order to get Santa's sleigh to work, there needs to be like Christmas spirit. And Jovi remembers that the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. Right, and so she starts singing. Everyone sings with her except for James Con, who's just mouthing the words, which I think is pretty funny. So James Con finally sings, and it is just the boost that Santa needs. And he gets his sleigh up, and they do the Christmas thing, and yeah, it's pretty much it. But in the end, look at what Buddy did. Yeah, I mean, he saves Christmas. He's the elf that saves Christmas. But more than that, he helped his dad. Did he? He helped his little brother. He helped his, yeah. he, he helped his dad find him. <laughs> yeah, but his dad is more soft at, towards the end of the movie. Towards him, towards his other son. Yeah. You're missing the, the, the magic. Of but he him. also loses his job. Yeah, but that shows that he, like... That was significant because he was like living for his job. Yeah. And then he realized like, you know what? I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> I'm not going to be a dad to this job. I'm going to be a dad to my sons. Okay. All right. I remember being confused at the end of the movie thinking like the dad was the last person on earth who didn't believe and then he believed and that's why yeah. Santa... Yeah, it kind of gives you that. Not like maybe not the last person on Earth, but <laughs> definitely the last person in that group. I think. Yeah. Well, I thought it was the last person on Earth. Okay. <laughs> Ten-year-old Jackie did. Right. Wow. Now, now we all believe. <laughs> Jackie thought that the real secret to Christmas magic was fascism. Everyone coming into the same belief. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> they make a book based on Buddy, and it's a kid's book that sells a million copies, and everything is right with the world. And then him and Jovi have a baby named Susie, which I guess is named after Buddy's mom, right? Susan Wells. Oh. I never put that together, but maybe. So this movie was made for $33 million. It ended up making 225 at the box office, which is pretty great. Honestly, it's a lot of money for a holiday movie. It's got an 85 on Rotten Tomatoes, 3.4 on Letterboxd, only 64 on Metacritic, which was kind of surprising. Roger Ebert gave this three stars, and he said that he went into it like totally ready to hate it. And then after watching for 10 seconds, his heart was changed. Christmas magic. I know, I know. <laughs> so normally we would hear from some friends on Twitter, but we're kind of recording out of order preparing for christmas so we don't have any friends today we're just going to jump straight to the strangers on the internet it's a segment called half star three star five star, half star, three star, five star. sounds great <laughs> <laughs> so these are reviews from letterbox.com we start with a half star review which is the lowest rating that you can give a movie and we go all the way up to a five star review which is the highest rating that you can give a movie and normally I read the half star review in an accent. Do you guys have any requests? You should use Buddy the Elf. I should what? <laughs> do it a Buddy the Elf voice. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> I can do I can do a young New York Michael accent. Hey, okay. hey, yo, oh, I'm Michael. I'm a little boy. <laughs> but I'm tough. Yeah, that works. I got my big coat. I got full armor, full health. <laughs> Okay. All right. Half Star Review says, Buddy, funny name for someone with no friends. Can't wait to see this guy hang from the gallows. Oh, my gosh. What the heck? It's a pretty extreme. <laughs> they are screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, three-star review says, not nearly the masterpiece I think people have held it up to be, 
but still a nice Christmas classic nonetheless. Some jokes still land really well. I've grown to not really be a fan of Will Ferrell comedies, but I let this one slide because I think there's enough good stuff in it. Thanks for letting it slide. <laughs> I almost agree. Like, I don't really like Will Ferrell. Well, not really agree, but I don't like Will Ferrell in general. Yeah. But I love him in this movie. Right. Yeah, I I kind of am like right around where this three-star person is. Yeah. All right. Five-star review says, It is not truly Christmas until I've watched Elf. This is just one of those movies that has you smiling and laughing from start to finish. I was seven when I saw this in the cinema, the perfect age, and I've loved it ever since. The movie has so many iconic scenes and quotes that people use them outside of the Christmas season. It's a Christmas classic. Five stars. So on this show, we use a rating system that Michelle calls a schmovie movie film which I cannot explain to you exactly what that means. And then we rate a movie one through five stars and give our final thoughts and recommendations. So does anybody want to go first? Wait, so you want to see your, your, our rating of the movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we said recommendation, like... Like, do you... So, <laughs> so like, by... Do you categorize this as a movie, a movie, or a film? One through five stars. Do you recommend people watch this? What are your final thoughts on it? All that stuff. I give it a 4.5. Okay. Only because I feel like giving it a five is a little too much. Okay. But I do watch it several times every Christmas season. Okay. <laughs> um, I would definitely recommend it to people. I do recommend it to people. But I feel like I don't know that many people who haven't watched this movie yet. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really have to recommend it. What was the other one? Schmovie movie, movie film. What's the difference between a movie? Look, don't ask me. This is Michelle's thing. She's not here, so I'm just flying by the seat of my pants with this one. I guess I'll say movie because I feel like film is more like sophisticated. Okay. All right. That's what I would assume. Okay. And this isn't really a sophisticated movie show. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I'd give it a movie. Okay. You done, Tori? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'd say this is a movie. This is a movie. Okay. A good movie. And I, too, I'm not going to give five stars because I give nothing five stars. <laughs> oh, my God. Nothing is perfect. Okay. Oh, my God. But, like, yeah, That's... four and a half at least. Okay. And I recommend you add this, if you haven't, to your yearly Christmas movie viewing schedule. Okay. Okay. You never asked what my favorite Christmas movie was, by the way. I was asking, when I asked that, I was asking everybody at the same time. I, I felt like it was more directed towards Jack. All right, well, yeah, what's yeah. your favorite Christmas I like movie? I like to say. What's your favorite Christmas movie? It's like the tie between this Christmas, yes, Family Stone, okay, <laughs> or some might people might argue that this is not a Christmas movie, but Little Women. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. It's a goodie. When we were talking about what movie to do for this with you guys, this Christmas got kicked around a little bit. Ah. And this Christmas will be. Wait, not that I support. I was just no, gonna no. say, can but, we can we support this movie? But he does an amazing job on that song. <laughs> a very special Christmas. Maybe that's why I don't like it because he beat up my girl Rihanna. <laughs> shake a hand, shake a hand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's, it is good. I agree. And like I said, I don't like Christmas movies. Anyway. I agree that this is a movie. I am going to say three stars. I actually don't recommend that you see this. If you haven't seen it at this point, you must be avoiding it for some reason. And and I, I, I don't often say this, but like if you don't have kids to watch it with, and it doesn't have to be your kids. Like if you're not around children to watch this movie. Just get a random kid don't, and watch. Yeah, sure. <laughs> hey, you want to go watch Elf? Seth told me I couldn't watch it without a kid. 
<laughs> but like, it's just like you're gonna throw this on by yourself like just hanging out you're not gonna have a good time it's just my guess not true okay i your review is false wow <laughs> even michelle doesn't go that hard on me my goodness <laughs> You know, the name of the show is Movie Friends, Tori, not uh, Tori is Right and Seth oh. is Wrong. Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for joining us, guys. Us oh, or the, the <laughs> You guys, you guys, you guys. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having us. I hope you don't regret asking me. Oh, no. Were you guys nervous? I was like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> oh my God. The movie, you know. <laughs> the movie. I was I'm like, like, how are we going to keep this going? <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you don't know how to keep talking? Sometimes. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah but so a lot of times I like think back and I'm like, oh, I should have said that or I shouldn't have said that. So now there's oh, going to be... Well. All, all the time. Welcome to my much. world. I, yeah. Every yeah. time we how many hours recording. of you talking? Well, I know that there's stuff missing because normally I write my notes down as um, different segments. My entire fact section is like missing, so I know there's going to be stuff where I'm just like, like, oh wow, I totally didn't mention like Tori bringing up what's his name from A Christmas Story. Hey, if you need someone to watch Elf with you, send us an email, moviefriendspodcast at gmail dot com. We'd love to hear from you. It could be about Elf. It could be about Christmas movies. It could be about anything, really. I mean, you know, I don't care. Is this the best Christmas movie ever? Because Christmas movies in general are not good? I don't know. You tell me. You can also leave us a rating or a review. Makes us smile. Makes us happy. It helps the show. How? I don't know. I'm not a computer. I don't know how the algorithm works. You can also support the show. Patreon.com slash Movie Friends Podcast. $5 a month gets you access to four additional shows. And the patron only Discord, where you can come in and say, Seth, I just listened to your episode, and you're wrong, and I'll actually respond to you. Anyway, thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Tori. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. <laughs> if you ever want to come back, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Or maybe, you know, maybe we'll wait. Maybe we'll wait. We'll do this again next Christmas, and we'll do this Christmas. Who knows? Yes. Um. Also, if you ever do Gummo Girls, oh. you know. Hey. I've watched it. I would come back for that. So many times. Maybe we can do a little Gilmore Girl uh, miniseries one day. Because I also love Gilmore Girls. That's not to love. Uh, a lot. Yeah, there's some upsetting things. Normally at this point I'd be like, hey, where can people find you guys online? But you guys don't really use social media that much. You can find me at my couch. <laughs> <laughs> Plumped over. Okay. You can find me on MySpace. Oh my god. You probably could, but don't. <laughs> I miss my space. Yeah, it was great. Mm. All right, well, thanks again, guys. It's a lot of fun. And thank you very much for listening. Have a good one. Movie Friends is produced by Seth Vargas and Michelle Rubenstein. Music by Anthony Vicora. If you like the show, please subscribe and give us a rating. It really helps us find new friends. Thanks.